let's do chapter eight. <laughs> um, let's just open it up. What else? What did you guys see in chapter eight? Chapter eight's a, a shorter one, but there's some good stuff yeah. in this one. It's like half the size of the previous chapter. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But there's still a lot yeah. of good stuff in this one. Uh, yeah, so the first thing I'm going to mention is uh, I'm really upset that we talk about a vampire. Uh, Krill does, and that's why he's got all the garlic and everything like that. And uh, the amount of times uh, this entire thing has been talked about, uh, not once do we ever meet a vampire in the entire series. Uh, we do. Thank you, Chewie. I am on so the I'm same upset. boat with you. I, yep. I can, we do meet I one vampire. on the same boat. Do we? I bring it up yeah. all the time. Sanguini. Sanguini. <laughs> who's just at yeah, the slug. Sanguini at the death day party. Uh, death day party, but... yeah. Oh, okay, good. Okay, then that makes but that's me it. a little more happier. <laughs> but I still we get want more. no information about vampires at all throughout this entire <laughs> series. I do know that there was talk a long time ago. JK said that they're going to make Snape a vampire, uh, and that never happened. Um, oh but... no, it, it wasn't. It wasn't that they were going to make Snape a vampire. She was going to have a vampire professor. Okay, um, Ooh, that'd be cool. And then. Snape ended up being more like that, anyways. Yeah, Snape being ended up being more vampire-like and kind of taking the place of that professor, but okay. not being okay. a vampire. Yeah, well, I still want one. <laughs> oh, I, I, I too. I'll take it. There's there isn't even an article on Pottermore about vampires, which is weird. That's because be. that's because uh the vampire sequel is twilight i'm <laughs> just kidding that's where cedric goes <laughs> john I'm american version this call <laughs> yeah wait somebody just left no, I'm just <laughs> yeah so it's like I'm, i can't do this anymore <laughs> yeah um there is this note that everyone seems to talk about in this chapter but the first thing that Snape mentions, which is, or not the first thing that he mentions, but the first question that he asks Harry, the powdered root of asphodel into an infusion of wormwood. And oh just, yeah, the uh, the whole I regret Lily's yeah, death yeah. or whatever. Because what is that? What does that exactly mean? It's a uh, lily. Asphodel is a type of lily, right? Uh yeah. So I actually have that pulled up. <laughs> and wormwood, I think, oh. means bitterness or regret. asphodel is a type of lily, meaning my regrets follow you to the grave and wormwood means absence and is associated with bitter sorrow combined these two would mean i bitterly regret lily's death ouch yeah. dang yeah the thing is jk has never confirmed that yeah so i don't yeah. like to believe it because i don't believe in snape <laughs> yeah, yeah come on nemo <laughs> yeah I, it's it's a little too much of a coincidence though but everything yeah, but else he, that he mentions, Harry does take into play. I feel like he's leading him. He talks about the Bezoar. Yeah. The Bezoar, yeah. I mean, he it, 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 these come yes. back in the sixth book. That's true. But I don't think it, they have a hidden meaning. Mm. No, I think that's just like basic first aid knowledge that you should know. Yeah. And no one knows about a, a Bezoar, though, or a Bezoar, whatever it is. I feel like half the, like, no one actually knows what that is. That's why, so there's, there's some things in the wizarding world I'm like, it's it's less common knowledge than I think we think. I mean, we know what it is because it's based, it's like in Harry Potter, but I'm like, I don't think a ton of the students know, really know what a Bezoar is. Okay, this is this is like when uh, kids that I went to high school with talk about how school never taught them how to do taxes, and I sat next to you in class, in our business <laughs> class, when they specifically taught us how to do taxes. So, <laughs> like... <laughs> Don't complain about that. I was there. Business. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you just don't remember it. Yeah. I mean, well, you were taught to do maths. Is... That's that's essentially half of what taxes is. Mm. Yeah. No, it was specifically doing, like, handwritten tax forms is what we had to do in class. And I was in that class with you, and I remember how to do it. So don't complain <laughs> about school not teaching people how to do taxes. You learned it. You just forgot it. I mean, business isn't a compulsory um, yeah. subject in schools, but um, it, it uh, is. These are, I think, would be a handy thing to have. Um, yeah. In a potions classroom specifically, because if one of these students is like, "Oh, this would be so much funny to drink," like so much fun to drink, because you know kids are idiots. Mm. Like, yeah. surely that they should just be on hand to deal with. And I feel like that's the kind of thing that everybody should be taught day one. 
yeah. and reminded of to be like, okay, the bezoar is there if anybody like you know bites their nails after sticking it in a potion or something. I don't know. Hogwarts doesn't care about safety. Uh, we all know this. to be doing. <laughs> it's like but, in um, your chemistry classes when you had that shower that was just like in the side corner. It's like the same thing, but for uh, they just have a bezoar just chilling on the desk right there. Yeah. If you accidentally sip some of the potion, you have to go take a bezoar. Sure. It's on the wall like an AED. Yeah. <laughs> break, yeah, you have it's to break the glass. The eye yeah. <laughs> <The eyeball> all rinser. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, those things were great. I don't know. I, I like to think that these were more purposeful. Like Snape was like giving him hints on certain things that he might have needed into into future things. But I mean, like, how how does Snape actually know some of these things that are gonna are gonna happen? That's obviously a great point. Because he, he's kind of just taking stabs here. Well, to be fair, Harry doesn't remember it. He learns it yeah, again exactly from enough. Snape, yeah. technically, in, yeah. in Half Blood Prince. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, Snape helps him later on in, in, you know, three with the whole werewolf thing. So, I, yeah. again, I don't like Snape, I said that, uh, but he still does help massively yeah. throughout the entire series. Uh, you know, whether he likes it or not, he's doing it for Dumbledore and Lily and stuff like that. But Steve I... still just sucks in the book. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah. I don't. I'm not complaining about Snape helping or not. I'm more, more complaining about that there are no hidden messages in these questions that people <laughs> sort of ascribe them to be. Well, Snape Snape is working very close with Dumbledore, and I think Snape was just like planting seeds for things that people need to know later. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's not just for Harry; it's for the entire class. He's just sort of planting seeds so that when you run across these things again, you'd be like, oh yeah, I heard about that. Okay. And then... I could, and it could have not just been Harry that needed it. And it might, he's just giving yeah. it to anybody. Yeah, it might, it might settle in a bit better if you... if you've heard about it before and then you do research about it. It's like, oh, I heard about that. Okay. And then it sets in a little bit better. Mm. Yeah. On the point of like, Nate and being hairy about with all these questions. Um, I always have a soft spot for Seamus. For the third question, Harry got Seamus' eye and Seamus winked at him. Yep. That's so cute. Yeah. That's so cute. <laughs> that is great. I can't, I can't really imagine that. Like, he just looks over at Seamus and then Seamus does one of these at him. Like, <laughs> I've never understood winking, but <laughs> it's cute, though. <laughs> that, is, that is a cute moment. Good little, like, friendship budding right there. Or maybe maybe Seamus just thinks Harry's cute at that moment and he's just giving him a wink. <laughs> That's because he hasn't seen Dean yet. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah, Dean wasn't in the sorting ceremony, obviously. <laughs> Dean's a late student. <laughs> um, uh, I must say, like, I really realized how dangerous um potions can be. Like, yo, it was <laughs> insane. Same, like the cauldron melted and everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah some of the stuff like again one of my favorite uh uh passages in just all the books or like moments is in slughorn's class in his newts he's talking about all the potions there and he has like some of the craziest potions just laid out there and i would love to get advanced potion making and just see what all the potions do like i would love for her to write advanced potion making like i don't like you know ingredients we can do it we're muggles um, but just to see what all these other potions actually have the, the ability to do would be fascinating, I think. Because mm. this is, he's talking about the, uh, the draft of living death here. And that is a crazy potion to me. That's the one that they have to make in, um, Slagon's Claws. Yeah. To win the... Yeah. Yeah. It's a dangerous thing to make in also, in class. outrageously <laughs> dangerous. Perfect. What is going on? I know it messes up here uh, from my sphere. Yeah. Yeah, that was the question. <laughs> that was what also in Fantastic like? Beasts, right? The big pool of uh, black liquid. Yeah, Fantastic that Beasts was wrapped in living death. That's what I thought it was. You uh, step what into does... it and you immediately die. What does Draft of the Living Death yeah. actually do to you? It kills you. It causes for you. Yeah. No, yeah, it puts you to sleep. Death. Deep sleep that it seems like yeah. you're dead. Mm. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. This doesn't Slughorn go, I dare say, one drop would kill us all. That's, yeah. I think, over yeah. exaggeration at this Flat point. But, yeah. Oh, right, okay. Yeah. Does he just say yeah, that in I, movies? I, Is that a book line? 
I think it's in the movies, not in the books. It's in the movies. Mm. Oh, right, okay. Brooklyn. We'll get there mm. in like seven years. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're doing two tests a week. We're going we a little come quicker. Back to this and yeah. make sure they line up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Someone remember this, Chewy. You're gonna be our note taker. You gotta, you gotta archive not only our or- normal podcast, but you gotta archive everything in this one too. <laughs> the class secretary. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Yeah. So Snape calls it a sleeping potion. So powerful. Yeah. It is known mm-hmm. as the draw of living death. Yeah. Yeah. So the fact that they never used that to try to like escape some situation is weird. I wonder if there's a remedy for the draft of living death. <coughs> Bees are there has to be. Draft of living <laughs> death. Maybe it just wears <laughs> off after a while. Bees are poison. Poisons. A bezoar is like the control mm. of the leash of the wizarding world. Just <laughs> out with the now. Oh, it, oh, could you could you imagine at the end of the books um when Harry's in the forest and Dread of the Living Death, maybe it wears off after a while. And Harry just like chugs some of it before Voldemort even attacks him. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to win. <laughs> I didn't notice the change between the movie and the books where it's like in the movie, he's caught writing notes. Uh, not paying attention to Snape. Mm. Uh, it's the notes he's repeating, you know, what he's saying, but here in the book, it doesn't say anything like that. She's yeah. sitting there paying attention. Snape comes in, says his piece, and then, Harry, let me put myself to you, Potter. Yeah. <laughs> that always bothered me so much in the movies because he's literally writing down exactly what Snape wants them to do, which is like take notes, <laughs> and then he gets scolded for that. I don't want to pay attention. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that annoyed me so much. Yeah. And Harry actually says that he did read the books during um at the Dursleys. Yeah. But I mean, he um, remember can't remember the name everything. Of the book. So. Yeah. Remember the name of the book. That's more than enough. Yeah. 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 Because like I mean Harry. I did that when I was like, when I was like even high school, college, I would get my books and then you know, you read those ahead of time, you're like so excited, but I don't know any retention of anything that was in there. You just like scam or scam scan through it real quick and just see what's in there. That's about all you know. What are we going to do here? And the headline, like yeah, the exactly. Headline. <laughs> yep, exactly. Yeah. Nice yeah. idea. Mm-hmm. Since we're uh, in a potions class, I just wanted to ask uh, you guys about what you thought about potions. Is it basically just like baking where there's no creativity involved? At least in the most fundamental, basic, like first year classes, there's no creativity involved in just following instructions. It, I guess I was curious on that yeah, point because, I mean, no, it's just in, chemistry plus magic. That's it. That's what I thought. But then it seems like six year when Harry gets the book and he's following new instructions, seems like he's able to follow the instructions perfectly well. And so why wasn't he as good as following instructions, you know, previous years? Mm-hmm. Is that because of Snape being because super Snape. Like, scary or <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Well, also, also we find out that uh, there's a lot of instructions that can be done better. You know, right. So, so like, do, do that. It's does like that how, to, how to mince garlic. There's this way to do it. There's this way to do it. There's that way to do it. Yeah. Snape it never is. published his own book. He was just going, like, that... teaching them verbally. Because he's selfish. He could have been a millionaire. <laughs> isn't there, like, a theory where, book? like, isn't there a theory where um, he, was, he would always write the recipes on the, the, yeah. the chalkboard? And so he was actually writing his updated recipes instead of, you know, doing what Slughorn did. It's like, you know, follow your book. Is, is, is that confirmed or... I like that. I don't idea. know if it's confirmed, but I I don't think they use books all that too often in the book. In, in right. The books. I feel like he probably <laughs> just used his updated recipes on the classroom, uh, on the class on the whiteboard or whatever. This is like, um, you guys ever have one of those like experiments when you were a student, <clears throat> where your teacher would like gave a whole test and she's like, make sure you read every single question on there before you uh, do it, and then everyone's like quickly writing everything down. And the last question on that is like, you know, just read this question and then turn your page or paper over and you get a hundred on it. Yeah. I'm sure that's what like yeah. Snape is doing. He's like, he's <laughs> like, uh, okay, everyone pay attention to the chalkboard and he's writing the actual thing on the chalkboard, but then everyone just looks in their book and they're like missing the, like what's right yeah. in front of their mm-hmm. eyes. Like the brilliance of, of Snape here yeah. with his potion making. I feel like Hermione would have found that out. Yeah, yeah, it's true. He's up there, but... I mean, that's why he's, remotely successful in, in potions. Mm. 
and Draco. Draco also follows uh, Snape. Mm. And they also yeah, said, I, I think uh, Joe... Harry's... Go ahead, Jables. Harry still got pretty high grades in potions. Yeah. He mm -hmm. just wasn't good enough for Snape's acceptance into the newt level. Mm. Which is weird. Yeah. <laughs> And I remember Joe saying something because I think someone asked her this one of these questions. And this is one kind of she talked about how there always has to be some kind of magic involved. It's not just like, you know, muggles can come and just do these potions and just be successful at them. There's always some kind of wand work to it. There's always something um, a bit more magical oriented in it. But uh, potions, I mean, I was terrible in high school chemistry, but it was so fascinating to me, even though I was terrible at it. I would love just to like pick snape's brain for everything like the because the creativity involved in it is one of the more fascinating ones to me like yeah there's creativity and a lot of other things but i think the creativity and potions of like how good snape is and and the certain things that he can make and create and like how experimental you can go with some of the, some of these things that just fascinates me for um what snape is actually doing behind the scenes mm -hmm. yeah i mean in they, in the books, they talk about like exact number of like uh, stirs you do in clockwise and anti-clockwise yeah. directions and so on. So it definitely has some amount of sort of magical theory involved in it, mm -hmm. if not wand work. Yeah. You yeah. see it as being a little bit more like cooking than chemistry. Like you can follow a recipe completely as it is, but then if you add, you know, a, a pinch more salt and a, half a clove of gar garlic, it could just taste better than the recipe book. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. So I feel like it's a little, because I feel like chemistry, I don't know, I didn't do chemistry. That's not my thing at all. But um, I'm assuming with chemistry, like, it's not like you could be like, oh, I'll try and be a little bit creative and add a little bit more hydrogen. <laughs> mm, I clearly yeah. know nothing about chemistry. <laughs> I don't even know if hydrogen is a chemical. <laughs> like, I feel like no. if you do something like that, it could go terribly wrong. Yeah, it, it can. Mm. Yeah. Nemo's like from experience. <laughs> yes, 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 from experience. I've done those things, and I have created a lot of fires in my chemistry lab. So I know. <laughs> I can't <laughs> hear. <laughs> <laughs> I had a chemistry set. Uh, yeah. I honestly yeah, I mean, read the anarchist the cookbook. There's a lot of ways things can go wrong. <laughs> I think if I'd have walked into the uh, chemistry in? lab in school, they'd have just been like, Becky, please leave. <laughs> because I was never, <laughs> I was always quite chaotic. They'd be like, you do not belong in this room. Please leave. <laughs> the risk assessment doesn't cover you being here. Um, yeah. I used to sit in front at the, in our chemistry cross, um, now matric year. And um, my teacher said my, like two weeks, um, like before our final exam, he set my notebook on fire by accident, and then, like, all my notes were gone for my chemistry. So I had to redo no my half of my book, like, two weeks before my final Oh, my exam. gosh. Oh, my you, gosh. you should have just gotten an A in that class. Yeah, absolutely. Like, you burned yeah. all my notes. So that, like, our um, <laughs> final exam for, like, or at least, um, or at least government state, so it's grades. not like the teacher. Oh, so. bummer. Oh. <laughs> uh. um. Yeah. But yeah, I think there definitely was some obsession there with uh, Snape and potions. Like, I think people were always talking about how obsessed he was with uh, defense against the dark arts. But um, I mean, even like in the sixth and sixth year when he changed to being the defense against the dark arts teacher, he still was his office was still like uh, near the potions dungeon and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So it seems like he wanted to always have access to that, you know, at a moment's notice. So he was always probably tinkering in his room, getting his yeah. hair all oily and, you know, <laughs> getting, getting active. <laughs> There was another thing you had in common with Lily, because, I mean, she was also good at potions. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Was Lily good at potions, or what, did Snape help her? I think she was good at everything. It sounded like it. No. I mean, yeah, she was obviously nah, uh, good I, at I think, I think Snape helped her, because for years and years, they were friends. Maybe she until... helped him and stole her notes. <laughs> Yeah, that could be it as well. Yeah, I kind of like that. Ooh, the Half Blood Prince recipes are actually Lily's. Mm. I like that actually a lot. The Muggle Born Queen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I got a question. Uh, 
because I would be interested in the history um, class with Professor Benz. I know that it'd be boring, yes. but I would find it uh, phenomenal. Um, what class in, in Hogwarts would you want to teach? Because mm. I'm, I'm a huge history fan, so I would, that, that would be Teach or learn? To teach, to teach. If you were the professor, ah. what would you want to teach? Oh, muggle studies. Yes, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm an expert at that. Got it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'll definitely Caramel. go for astronomy. I don't know how it works in the ma magical world, but mm. I can figure it out. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, muggle I'm just fascinated by people. That's why I do muggle studies. Mm. It's like, oh, these are people that you're going to see in here. And I think it'd be okay. funny if they uh, Wait, if they they made a muggle the professor of muggle studies and like maybe they lift the enchantment just for that for that muggle that they they're not like you know teaching in castle ruins anymore but they're like oh I can actually see Hogwarts and teaching this I feel like that'd be kind of cool yeah. oh, Jacob Kowalski's Jacob yeah, Jacob. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that'd be the best I would love that <laughs> in uh, in reality the best person would be a squib that chose to live with muggles for. A long period mm -hmm. of time. Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. comes to Hogwarts to be a professor of Muggle studies. Yeah. That or a choice. person with a with like a Muggle one Muggle parent and one Wizarding parent. Mm -hmm. I think the, the the only issue with having a Muggle teacher is that they wouldn't be able to, uh, they wouldn't understand it from the Wizarding side, and so uh, it's hard to teach. It's, yeah. it's like having or it's like having a like a language teacher who doesn't speak your language. You know, it, mm -hmm. you can't really. But that's teach. quite. That's a thing. Like there are loads of uh, English uh, English language teachers that don't speak uh, other languages, so you can learn that you can do a teaching English as a foreign language course, and do, obviously, well, I think in that sense it's sort of it's good because you're learning off each other, and I feel like maybe that would give some sort of satisfaction to the students as well, being like giving them confidence to be like, oh, we can also teach you. Mm. Um, yeah, I yeah. don't know, learning on the job. Yeah, actually, a bit. When I lived in Poland, that's actually, I knew a guy who did that. Uh, he didn't speak any Polish, went there, lived there, uh, married a girl there, obviously. But yeah, he was teaching uh, English only and then picked up Polish. And now he's got two children. They both are fluent in both languages. He's fluent in both languages and, you know, took some time. But he said, uh, he said, yeah, he got there. And he knew nothing, mm -hmm. no Polish, just got there to teach English. I, I just don't know what they're teaching in Muggle studies because... Arthur Weasley doesn't even understand rubber ducks. That's because he didn't take my <laughs> So what are they teaching in that class? <laughs> to be fair, though, if I was to write up a school curriculum to teach people mm -hmm. the way of muggles, I don't really think the rubber ducks would be anywhere on that curriculum. <laughs> <laughs> I've never They're wondered. Like you know um, so true. I, I, mean, I mean, still, like he, he calls electricity ecotricity. Like, it's a tough it's, word. Uh, it's a tough oh, word. It is, it is a hard one. Yeah, for sure. Maybe he developed an interest in Muggle studies like <laughs> after his own years. Yeah. True, yeah. Yeah. I won't stand for this Arthur Weasley slander. No, this is maybe when I speak dissing how they teach about muggles in the school. This is a diss on the school system, not Arthur Weasley. He's a gem. Mm. Uh <laughs> I kind of think I would want to teach history of magic or herbology. I think herbology would be just put me in like a greenhouse outside somewhere. It's nice weather. Yeah. Just planting so you can stuff. faint to the mandrax. Exactly. The mandrax. Yeah, yeah, 100%. <laughs> just me and Neville just chilling in the greenhouses. Is that the only reason to just hang out with Yeah, Neville? yeah 100%. <laughs> oh, I just love plants too. So <laughs> That's the ulterior motive. Gotcha, yeah. gotcha. I feel yeah. like maybe I'd like to work in the, the hospital wing because hmm. then you just get to like... Um, I think I would do that. <laughs> learn all of the like crazy shit that the students have been getting up to. Because <laughs> like yeah. the professors <laughs> must not know about all of that stuff. But like, could you imagine? You've got like a student coming in being like, oh, I, you know, did whatever and didn't have a bee Wait, or a hand. Wait, how did like, you I turned into a cat. I turned yeah. into a cat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah I turned into a cat, exactly. Like... <laughs> I must say that's the, the most unrealistic. That's the most unrealistic hospital wing ever because she doesn't ask questions. 
Mm. I mean, that's so unrealistic. I mean, yeah. yeah. Oh, I, I, no, I, think and, the, I think that's that the best hospital happen. wing ever. <laughs> Don't ask yeah, questions. Don't ask I mean, I think, I think she was hired, especially because of her talents of not asking questions. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like not a realistic healthcare professional because I think healthcare, healthcare professionals love gossip. Like, I think they live on it. <laughs> yeah. So that she didn't you need have to ask assistance. questions. Like, to know why to fix them, like, you need to ask questions. I'd be on the, like, the bedside with a cup of tea. I don't even drink tea. I'd be on the tea, like, spill it, sis. Like, I'd, I'd, want, I'd want to know everything. <laughs> well, also, they, they have so many beds there as well and it's most of the injuries are solved pretty quickly yeah that's <laughs> a lot of people trying I to would... curse their acne off a lot of people you know yeah if i were her i would worsen it first to learn to teach them a lesson wow and then get it <laughs> <laughs> oh, does wow. okay i'm never gonna get sick when i'm at hogwarts okay you are really teaching us a lot about yeah. you i torture them <laughs> so this this doesn't happen in the but, books at all but do you think the person that runs the hospital wing at hogwarts is responsible for sex ed <laughs> never thought about that that question has never entered into my brain <laughs> <laughs> it, it, had, it hadn't entered my brain until now. So well, that's that's Filch's responsibility. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, he keeps the chains well oiled. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Honestly, okay. Turning it back, I think Care Magical Creatures would be really fun too. I got a cool dog. That would... yeah. yeah, that'd be yours. Nah, I, I, I would that'd not be yours. take that class. What? One shaking head Come like on, that's class. Yeah, that's what I care magical creatures. Yeah, for sure. Or like it'd be cool to be like Madame Hooch. Just like seemingly yeah. all she does is just like <laughs> like uh, yeah. watching <laughs> lesson and referee like four like, some yeah. matches. Yeah. Literally <laughs> living the dream. Uh the most irresponsible she teacher. The same salary as the rest and basically only works on weekends. Mm. <laughs> right? That'd be pretty sweet. <laughs> Because she doesn't even look after the brooms. I mean, like, Hagrid was defrosting them, not her. So. Yeah. She probably keeps inventory of supplies. That's... I wonder. Go ahead. Can you, like, can, you, can you substitute for us? And she's like, uh, no, no, it has nothing to do with the broom. I'm good. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if there's been any anything, any theories on her, because she's an interesting one. Because I think she's completely incompetent, at least... You know, I mean, every everyone is called a professor except for Hooch and Pomfrey. Yeah. So, so it, probably she is an uh, adjunct who just comes over, teaches one lesson, and then goes back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's like a driver's ed teacher. Yeah. Just comes in once in a while. <laughs> yeah, she doesn't even. Or just like a like a PE she... teacher, like instead of yeah, being like yeah. coach, whatever, like I don't know, or a gym teacher as you guys call it. Like, do you call them Mr. or we, Mrs. or do you call them like coach? Something? Coach, usually. Uh, well, well it just depends. Like, mm. like she uh, lives at my... and talks to me only. Mm. She's not no, even in... a professor. Doesn't even work at the school. Yeah. In in my PE classes, I would I do Mr. Been. or Mrs. for the teachers, and then if they were if they were coaching a sport I was in, then I'd call them coach. Mm. I suppose, like, maybe if you're, if you're a teacher, you've got sort of different credentials. You've done a master's or whatever. But if you're just teaching Quidditch or gym or whatever, then you don't actually have that professor title because you're not... I was going to say, well, I was going to say, like, you're not um, trained to be a professor, but it doesn't seem like a lot of those professors are trained mm-hmm. to be professors. So yeah, well, you know what they, they say, those stuff. who can't do teach and those who can't teach, teach gym. <laughs> wow! Wow! Nice. Uh, also, I have a question then for you guys because you're saying that gym teachers aren't teachers. So, in your countries, gym teachers they're not actual teachers. No, they are. Yeah, no, they, they are. But I'm, oh, like, no, they... in my country, yeah, like they have like their masters and everything in education. Like, they're, yeah, they're full did. teachers. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, it. it's. Oh. Yeah, I, we didn't I have, have gym, gym teachers that were also history teachers. It's just like, okay, 
Yeah. I thought that you like. We didn't have gym class uh, or PE class. So we had like sports after school, like rugby, netball, hockey, and all that stuff. And um, like the teachers would coach that as well. Mm. But it was mostly after school. We didn't have like a period during school for that. So we didn't have, and everything was outside. So we didn't have like indoor gym classes. And here are in my school, our PE teachers are also the health teachers. So to answer your question, would Madam Hooch be the sex ed teacher? (laughs) 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 Who wants that job? (laughs) Yeah, but I mean, all things considered, it seems like uh, Hooch's job isn't like a full-time gig. So I think the better question is, what's her other gig? Like, what does she do part-time otherwise? Is she like an offensive coordinator for like the holy head harpies or something like that like yeah she's getting active elsewhere yes yeah. she's a That's she's a she scout i mean well she's sleeping oh, yeah. during the yeah she falls asleep <laughs> during like, she's like trying to super she's like, supposed to supervise yeah. great mm-hmm. all right i just changed my job That's what I want. yeah <laughs> i sleep all day and only work twice four times a year and i don't take it perfect job <laughs> Maybe she's just like a yeah, recruiter she, uh, for, for Quidditch for like the Hollyhead Harpies. And then she just like goes to all the different wizarding schools, not just in Britain, but all over the place. And then she's really tired. <laughs> so that's why she's falling asleep during half the class. Maybe, maybe she's retired. Maybe, you know, that's that because I'm going to retire in two years. And Ooh. when I do retire in two years, I am doing nothing but being a stay at home dad. Uh, and growing a beard since I can finally do that. And yes. I'm going to go work at my kids' at school on random days and just kind of help out where I can. You can go be I'm a PE, G- PE teacher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, was, I thought you were going to say, I'm going to do nothing but teach PE. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she was like, I'll go volunteer every once in a while. <laughs> like it. That's what it is. She's retired. She has a backstory that, yeah. that we can fill in later. She has gold eyes in the uh, in the movies, which is weird. And eyes, yeah. Yeah, they gave her like hawk eyes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She's yeah. probably. I wonder if she was like a legendary seeker or something like that. I don't think she has a whole backstory that mm. we don't even know yet. I know. I'd have to look it up, but I don't. Want to. Get some <laughs> get some hooch fanfic going on. <laughs> hooch. <laughs> um. What uh? Who do you think is the best professor that they have at the school? So if we're okay. just in our first year. And we're just not McGonagall. just McGonagall. Wow, that's, you guys are quick. Hooch. <laughs> uh, Flitwick. Yeah. Oh yeah, Flitwick is also quite good. Mm. Does anybody know the progression of Defense Against the Dark Arts of what they learn every single year? Because in year three they learn they learn uh you know beasts. <laughs> but what do they do their first the year? Yeah, I know. Like, <laughs> what are they supposed to have learned? I mean, if there's one teacher <laughs> for all the seminars. <laughs> yeah, but there had to have been some kind of curriculum in this. In the third book, I'm under the impression that there is some kind of curriculum, and then Umbridge mentions some kind of curriculum as well, like what they're what they should be learning in fifth year according to the Ministry of Magic, which is like bogus. But when he's coming in, uh, Snape is like, "You guys should be, you know, at werewolves now, and you guys are only at you know red caps and hinky punks or whatever he says." So I'm like, year three seems like the the beasts kind of year like you learn learn to defend yourself from from like magical beasts i'm curious what one and two are if we had competent teachers we would know yeah i know seriously <laughs> yeah, year year one is protego yeah that's just the entire year you just learn one shield term but th- <laughs> that was yeah that was always shocking to me because i remember in the books i was like when i remember the first time i read this i was always bothered because it never really showed that they knew how to block spells like they mentioned oh you have to teach the students how to block unfriendly spells and then we never really see them use spells that block other spells in the entire what well, we see them later in the series but I, it always bothered me i'm like they're they're they didn't even learn that like can can someone just teach them how to block a spell so i can get that in writing somewhere and then my mind will be at ease okay so this is why snape wanted the defense against the dark arts job so bad because none of the teachers were competent <laughs> like yeah. actually teaching any sort of defense. Yeah. Cuz they they rarely use any defensive magic. It's all offensive. Well, yeah. It's only defensive in the sense of like self-defense when yeah. you stun somebody else. 
and Snape wanted that possession. Like, you know, that's a, it's an interesting thing, but I'm, I'm curious why they didn't pull other people from that. I know it's a curse position and people just don't want that position at all. But I, I like, I feel like someone like Tonks would be a great professor for, uh, um, defense against the dark arts or like Kingsley. Why is, why are they not convincing Kingsley to come be the teacher at Hogwarts? Maybe he just doesn't want it. Cause he has like a high position at the ministry. But uh, that mean, always struck me as a little odd too. At this point, the, it, there has been rumors that the post is cursed because no no professor lasts yeah. more than one year. Yeah. So that's why probably I think most people were not accepting the post. Mm. Yeah. He's scraping the yeah, bottom of the barrel when he gets to Lockhart. Dumbledore. Yeah, Dumbledore looped Lockhart into it just because it was like you're going to be teaching Harry Potter. Oh well. I'm right in on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Somebody on uh, on on Reddit took the time to kind of lay out what they thought the curriculum was based on the books, and uh, um, seems like year, they said they said year one is like intro to creatures one and intro to dueling one, and then year two is intro to creatures two, intro to dueling two, and then year three is dark creatures, year four dueling. Year five, laws, morals, and theory. Although I don't know if I agree with that because that's just umbrage. So who knows yeah, what that yeah, is. yeah. So I think well, so I think the way I think about it is like with a teacher changing every single year, every teacher is probably just going to be like, oh, where is their weakest spot? Let's fill yeah. it in because I think that does happen in the schooling system a lot too. I mean, mm. I'm sure maybe Gwen could even talk about that, yeah. but. Um, you know, if you if they if the teacher feels like, oh, you know, the, the education they got the previous year was kind of inadequate, let's fill in the holes and then let's kind of continue from there. Yeah, I uh, when I was in high school, I, my history teacher got a bad injury and couldn't teach anymore. So we had like a permanent substitute teacher. And for like the first we didn't know if he was going to come back in like a couple days or like a week or something. So like for the first week, it was just all fun times. And then it was like, well, it looks like I'm staying here for the rest of the year. Where are you guys at? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's no, like, there's no, like, data collection other than, yeah. like, summative, right? Like, okay, now write an essay about, like, they do a lot of essays, um, especially, I mean throughout the course of their schooling and it doesn't seem like a whole lot of like like data collection to guide the teacher's instruction it's mm. like keep up here's where you need to be and there's very little like differentiation especially when we were talking about something like potions like the students would totally benefit from like having like like a like a like an intro class or like okay let's catch you up on the skills neville right like mm -hmm. and then you know, like for the more advanced students, like, I mean, they reference remedial potions as the story goes on, but that just seems to be like some one-on-one -on -one tutoring. I don't know. Mm. Yeah. But the education system of Hogwarts is fascinating to me. Like I think <laughs> about <it> often. <laughs> Something that uh, needs yeah, a like lot of reforms. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, that, uh, the even... We were talking um, a few podcasts ago about um, how they introduce Muggleborns to the Hogwarts. Like they have a ministry official go, all that kind of stuff. I'm curious what they do the first like month of school. Cause I'm sure Draco is going, knowing uh, maybe a little bit more than, you know, some, actually it's kind of, he, he doesn't know more than uh, Hermione. Hermione probably goes in as a Muggleborn knowing the most out of everyone at the school, which is pretty wild because he's read every and memorized every book but like harry doesn't know what the heck he's talking about <clears throat> wasn't in that world at all so i'm curious if like they have to have like, at least like a they should have like a week long or like a month long orientation for okay these are some of the basics that you just have to know about you know yeah these these are yeah just like a it's just like a just like an extra hour every day yeah right just yeah sort of all right, these are things that exist in this world. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hey, this is a port key. <laughs> yeah, for real. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, like, this is what the flu the network castle. is. Yeah, tour this of the is... castle. Yeah. Like, 
here's where all the common rooms are. <laughs> you can't go into these common <laughs> rooms. <laughs> well, I think every kid just needs a tour of the castle so you can find your way around. Yeah. Honestly, yeah, McGonagall, oh, this is a jump ahead of it, but McGonagall, when she's saying, like, accusing um, Harry and Ron of being late for class, I'm like, the castle is huge. They've only <laughs> just started in the school. And, like, I always felt this way, but then when I started playing Hogwarts Legacy, and after a while I'd get cocky and be like, I don't need, like, any guidance. I don't need flu I'm just going to go walk to this classroom. Man, I didn't have a clue. Yeah. And I had, like, <laughs> 70 hours of game. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, exactly. I still don't have a bloody clue how to get anywhere. And then McGonagall has the audacity to be like, oh, did you get lost? Of course they got lost. It's a bloody mate. Yeah. The stairs my... move. With the... <laughs> my high school I'm on my... Was... My high school was a single hallway in a gym, and I still got lost. So it's, uh... <laughs> uh, I'm on yeah. my third play of a different um, house now on, on Legacy, and I was like trying to figure out where the, the Gryffindor was last time. I was like, where was that? I know I just played it that way. Yeah. I was like, where was it at? I know it was there. So yeah, I, I got lost. You only ever still... leave the common room. You never walk to it. Mm. <laughs> you, or you flew powder to it, so then you're like, oh, yeah. I'm here. I don't know what's at. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, except for except for Hufflepuff, I know where the kitchen's at very clearly. I can get that one there very easily. <laughs> yeah, the Ravenclaw one is easy because you just you just keep going. Up. <laughs> you just keep. <laughs> going. You know, in college, if I was in Hogwarts, I would be. I'd be like, can I switch houses? I simply cannot yeah. do these stairs every single time. Like this is too yeah. much. Yeah, but that also. Okay, so the the common room placements just leads to my theory. The only reason why Slytherins end up being evil is because of a vitamin D deficiency. <laughs> <laughs> so all, all Europeans are evil. <laughs> yeah. oh, so they're great. in the Scottish Highlands. Of course they're lacking vitamin yeah. D. They all are. <laughs> no, but it's even it's worse for the Slytherins. They're below the lake. They get zero sunlight in the <laughs> even if it is again, sunlight. it's the Scottish Islands. There's about two oh, days yeah. of sunlight a year. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's still two days more than ever in the summer. <laughs> <we're getting. laughs> so that's great. Maybe so that's gotta... what they do in first year potions. They like whip up vitamin D supplements. Yeah, yeah. It's all yeah. about the vitamins. <laughs> yeah, that... All about the vitamins in first year. You make seven years that's... worth of vitamin D for your first year. That's all you do in your first year. You store it up. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> um what else did you guys have in this in this chapter there's not a ton it's just kind of he goes to some classes he meets hagrid too which is a really lovely part or i love where he kind of and ron's excited to meet hagrid too it's a cute little part yeah yeah i don't know oh, what yeah. in your in your books if the if it's written differently or anything but like the letter that you get from hagrid itself uh, in my book it's spelled all right and correct and all the letters are good mm -hmm. yet hagrid's yeah. birthday cake is very uh Hagrid is spelled. Uh, yeah, some, that's like, a, that's the thing movie did. Not it's not in the books at all. Okay, it annoys me okay. so much in the movies. Mm -hmm. it, okay, okay, that makes that makes more sense because I was reading, I was like, man, eh, still okay, that makes more sense. Yeah. Also, Harry catches on to the fact that Hagrid is not telling him something about Snape, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. is that Snape was bullied by yeah. James. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I love that, Harry. Harry was saying he couldn't believe that he lost two points for Gryffindor, and I'm like, oh, Harry, just this wait. is only the beginning. Just <laughs> wait. Yeah. Points. yeah, two points. Come on. Soon you're gonna gain those two points back, and it when def you're, you defeat a troll, and you're only gonna gain a few more points after that, but you're gonna lose fifty points by doing you know, <laughs> by sticking out. So yeah. Outrageous. <laughs> Yeah, JK yeah. didn't really think too much about the point system. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she definitely, like, the teachers are so much more casual or, like, one point, two points. That's, like, nothing mm. in future books. Like, nobody yeah. ever takes two points away from somebody in future books. I feel like it's yeah. only this one, but correct me if I'm wrong. Like, after this, it's always, like, bare minimum of five. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like it's, you it's, breathed it's like... while I was talking. A thousand points from mm -hmm. Gryffindor. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Hermione gets like at least 10, 10, to, 10 to 20 points in every class she goes to. I'm surprised that Gryffindor yeah. isn't on top every single time <laughs> because of Harry. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Harry, <laughs> and Harry, well, that was because of Dumbledore. That. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it wakes up and he just wakes up immediately. He's like, oh, 50 points for, for Gryffindor. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> it also yeah, always. 
even a five or a zero. It's never like, mm. cool, 13 points to Gryffindor. Yeah. <laughs> Where is the rule book of how they award points? I just need something in writing of like the rule book of how they're awarding and taking away points. That's stupid. It's nonsense. It's just like the like the money system. Mm -hmm. Just <laughs> their money yep. system is wild. <laughs> I... Yeah, we went into let's, it. Yeah, let's time. not get on that. That's that's a whole different one. I'm. I guess I'm showing a big um, missing piece of knowledge that I have, but I don't. I've never fully understood how the points like actually get taken out like the the gems actually yeah. get sucked back up i guess or drops down is some um, is it something just magical like in the air at hogwarts where somebody just says Magic. that if <laughs> yeah. someone with authority says that it happens yeah the world's like, heavy how does that work yeah they, they say it with in, they say it with intention and then it okay with intention that's the key <laughs> <laughs> And yeah. they have to have a certain level of authority. I yeah. guess, yeah. Because they have to be registered. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The Inquisitors have authority for a certain parts. So I'm like, the rubies just go up or down. Yeah. And is it different does, like, gems? Does Umbridge sign them up to like yeah. have the authority? Yeah. Or, like, how does that yeah. work? Yeah. Yeah. There's be Even some prefects book. get that authority and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. What would what the gems be? Work? Ooh. Like if, if, you know, maybe that's why the Slytherins keep winning. They learn how to make Polyjuice Potion. They become a professor and they're like, 10 points is over, 20 points yeah. is over. They just keep going. Yeah, they're like, we have an hour, guys, adding, they quick. They just keep adding points like <laughs> incremental. Yeah, one point every day. <laughs> what are the gems in each of their uh, hourglasses? Probably it's rubies in Gryffindor, right? Sapphires. Yeah. In Sapphires. Slytherin. Yellow. Seven Ravenclaw, yeah. Ravenclaw, yeah. Em Ravenclaw. Emerald and S Slytherin. And we don't know what the Hufflepuff is, though it's most likely uh, either to topaz or oh, yellow yeah. rocks. Okay. Oh, okay. That's what they did. They were like, yeah, we don't have anything else. Let's just dye a bunch of rocks yellow and just throw it in there. And Hufflepuff's like, yeah. That was so Hufflepuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if you were a thief and just like smashed over those hourglasses and just took all those. Gems, I know. <laughs> You're good. You're good for life. Yeah. You know, during the Battle of Hogwarts, there's like stuff in your pocket. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anything else in this chapter before we wrap it up with our favorite line? I don't think so. Um, Harry's Harry's test. Oh, Go someone. Sorry? Wait, what? Someone said something. <laughs> Yeah, I was saying Hattie's sass. Yeah. Go ahead. Be sass. Yeah. When when oh. Snape is talking to him. That's... Oh, sassy Harry. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So real quick, it says that uh, J.K. Rowling uh, responds with uh, for Hufflepuff's house with diamonds. It's like yellow diamonds. They're not even hey. yellow. Hey. Diamonds. All right. Not diamond diamonds, yellow like Hufflepuff. white diamonds, but a yellow diamond. All this time, I thought they were cheese puffs. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. Cheese puffs. Yeah. That's it. The canary <laughs> puffs. Yeah, yeah. Canary creams. <laughs> canary creams. Oh, canary cream. Cheese <laughs> oh. puffs. That's so good. Uh, Bria, what were you saying? <laughs> I don't oh. remember. <laughs> Sorry. I forgot <laughs> what I was All good. It'll come back. One of the other oh. three people who was talking at the time. Go ahead. <laughs> well, I was just going to say that this is where um, Harry sees like the newspaper clipping about the more information about the Gringotts fault break in. And so he ends the chapter with like thinking questions about like what was in there. Had Hagrid collected the package just in time? Where was it now? Mm what does Hagrid, what is Hagrid not telling me about Snape? So those are just questions for the reader too. Yeah, that's a good point. This is this is where the driving force of the plot starts. Yeah. yeah. Also, yeah, yeah. also, it's not mentioned in the paper that the vault in question is vault 713. Harry just make the, makes that right. connection on his own. Mm. 
I love the um yeah. the the problems response is like we're not gonna tell you what was in this. So don't ask us. Like, <laughs> you know, out of our business. <laughs> so cool. Yeah, that's a good point. You want to do favorite lines? Yeah, yeah. What are your guys' favorite line? Five. What's your favorite line in this chapter? If you have one. Babe asks the question to Harry Potter. Harry's response is, I don't know. Ask Hermione. She yeah. does. You know, <laughs> yes. She ask her. It looks like Hermione Stassi. knows the answer. Stassi. Yeah, yeah. Hermione knows the answer. Always knows the answer. Yeah. Even even with what we were saying with like some of the questions that pop up where like which they're the driving force for like the plot of this book. I do really love I think she's such a good writer with some of that stuff. You know, some of the stuff is boring in the beginning where you're like, you know, okay, she's so fresh chapter one, she's giving me a recap of everything that happens in the previous book. You know, like that kind of stuff is a little bit boring. But how she drives you to to believe what you should believe about certain things. Even like, again, this is hilarious to me because I run this podcast with like 30 year olds and we're still duped for how like <laughs> she like how, you know, it was Quirrell the whole time, which is like the easiest plot device in all of the books probably. But like 30 year olds are duped about that. They're like, oh my gosh, she really led us astray in this way. And I didn't know what was going to happen and everything like that. It's so funny. So I love, I love those questions at the end of the chapter because they're great. And then I love this. This is one of my favorite lines. Because it really shows, it like sets the tension between Harry and Snape. It says at the start of the term banquet, and Cecilia, this is five paragraphs, so get ready. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> at the start of the term banquet, Harry had got the idea that Professor Snape disliked him. By the end of the first potions lessons, he knew he'd been wrong. Yeah. Snape didn't dislike Harry, he hated him. I'm like, it's such a good line for just setting the tone for how much yeah. Snape hates him. Yeah, that that's my favorite line as yeah. well. Yeah. Because I agree with Harry, Snape hits. Yeah, yeah, seems pretty clear. Yeah. Okay, so to be the opposite of John, mine is going to be a word. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just to shorten the podcast yeah, you gotta a bit. Balance you know. it out. Um, <laughs> a mine is when he calls them dunderheads. I think that's such a funny <laughs> word. Yeah. It's <laughs> yeah. a great one. Hmm. I can just hear Alan Rickman saying that word. I don't know. Does he say that in the movies? No, he didn't in the no. movie, I think. Yeah. Um, but it's funny. <laughs> Any other favorite lines? I think the, the line with uh, Seamus winking at Harry. I think it's so yeah. cute. And also, on top of that, I think it also shows a bit of Harry's personality. Where I think he's just naturally likable. Because I think, remember, in the... Um, the 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 final pensive Snape's memories, all that. I think you know there was Snape and Harry was Snape and Dumbledore were talking, and Dumbledore was like, "Oh, it seems like all the teachers feel like he's quite likable and all that." I think that it kind of reiterates that whole point, which is mm -hmm. I think I think shows up Harry's character even because it's all coming from his head, so he doesn't see all that. But it's it's nice kind of just you know getting mm -hmm. a little whiff of that at least. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, I think he was likable because but... he's humble. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because he even says, like, um, it feels, I think it was the sorting, he says it feels like he was back in his other school being picked for a sport or something like for club. But, and the kids didn't, they, it's not that he was bad. They wanted to pick him. It's just that they were afraid of that. Mm -hmm. So I think even them, like, they liked him. So Because he was a quick kid. Like, yeah, the only reason why he didn't have friends is because of Dudley. Yeah. Because he would beat anybody up that tried to be friendly. Mm. What a jerk. <laughs> what a dunderhead. <laughs> yeah, dunderhead. What a dunderhead. <laughs> <laughs> also, Great word. also, John Watt's favorite line, gotcha conk. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha <laughs> conk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Any last lines? Not a ton, but I mean, bottle fame, brew glory, stop or death. Mm. That's awesome. rad. It's so rad. And then, um, and then he follows it up with the dunder headline. If you aren't as yeah. big a bunch of dunderheads, <laughs> you usually have to teach. <laughs> bunch of contrast. 
What a juxtaposition. Yeah. yeah. And, <laughs> and you, we all know like Snape's a jerk, but dang, that's a great first lesson when you're saying this to your students. I'm like drooling. I'm like, bottle fame, brew glory, <laughs> put a stopper on death. Oh my gosh. And he calls you all dunderheads. You're like, oh, what the heck? I think Alan Rickman just delivers that line perfectly. Yeah. Like, he's just such a good job at that line. Yeah. But I didn't, I wish they would have finished the rest of that line. That would have been great coming from Alan. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, thanks for joining. I will, uh, I'll let you know when we're going to do our next one for the next two chapters, maybe next weekend sometime. But this is great. I love this so much. Cool. All right, guys. Yeah. Have a good one, and uh, uh, yeah, we'll see you guys. See you guys next time.